Hey gang, it's me, David, owner and operator of ComedyWham.com. I just want to say thank you so much for reading my articles over the past couple of years and supporting Austin Comedy. A couple of months ago, my friend Val came to me and she said, Hey Dave, how about we start doing audio interviews? I would love to go out and start interviewing comedians. I said, you know what Val, that's a great idea because I want to freshen up this site. I want to add different content to it. So that's what we did. So we set up these interviews in two parts. It's going to be past and present. Our first interview features Brendan K. O'Grady and Duncan Carson, proprietors of Sure Thing Records and Sure Thing Comedy Showcase. They're, they're great. You know them. You probably do. I want to let you know that I had to edit a little bit of this recording. The first few minutes had to be removed due to an audio issue, but don't worry. The interview itself is intact, and I hope you guys enjoy it. Thank you again for supporting Comedy Wham! and Austin Comedy. Look, the, the, the presence is a present. <laughs> what? Right. The what? present is a present. The present I don't is know. A present. Yeah, no, it's uh, yeah. Throat li- throat. Life is better now than it's ever been. Yeah. That's 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 a that's a longer way of saying yeah. you know that. <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of people know this about you guys, but you're from northern no, Southern California. Uh, Brendan, I grew up in Southern California. Yeah, uh, yeah born born in childhood in, in Northern California, the Bay Area, but uh, about twelve years old till my uh, my my grown age was in Southern California. Yeah, and. Duncan, you made it from the, the lovely Midwest, I Milwaukee. Moved right? here from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, yeah. in 2011. You were you were a Texan though for uh, for a period, right? Yeah, I moved around a few times before high school, and part of that was Houston. Oh, Clear Lake Intermediate went to middle school. But of all but of all the places that you went, Houston just never stuck because like cause, because you 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 took sports teams from kind of all over the map from where where you've lived everywhere but Houston. That is <laughs> for some reason no one <laughs> at my middle school gave one shit about. The Astros or the Rockets were great. This is like ninety five to ninety eight. Yeah. Huh? But nobody cared. There were no Oilers then, right? The Oilers were already gone. They yeah, no, they had just left to mm. Tennessee. That's what it was. It was a city in mourning. And no we were, one <laughs> no one could bring themselves to <laughs> We were a little we were a little burned <laughs> by it. I don't know. Mostly I just spent middle school, you know, like playing Starcraft and reading comic books, so it's not a big sports time. You know. I find that shocking to hear. No, you don't. <laughs> that is, don't patronize me. Hey, no, I, it's not patronizing. I, I didn't get into StarCraft and <laughs> I didn't get into StarCraft and not talking to girls until I was in my twenties in college. Nearly. But to answer your question, yes, I did. I moved to Milwaukee when I was fourteen and then I lived there until a few, few four, four years ago. There mm-hmm. we are. Yeah. Most of your most of your life. Most of my life. So I'm from Milwaukee, let's put it that way. So what made you come to Austin? Uh, just getting restless, and uh, long story short, I started stand-up when I was in college, I was 21 years of age, and uh did it for a while there, but like, mm, there's not much to do in the Milwaukee scene, or there wasn't in 2006, so didn't do it for a while, and then in the beginning of 2011, started doing it all the time, and was looking for a scene to do more of it in, and heard great things about the Austin art scene, my sister went to UT, and would okay. always tell me how great of a town it was to live in, Yeah. So. Summer 2011. Here I am. You always wow. undersell the best part of the story of, <laughs> of, of how you decided to move What's here. What's the best part of the story? You visited here once before you moved here, right? I did. And I did. you told me that, that you had the greatest movie-going experience of your entire life. <laughs> and, 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 that, and then afterward, you were so in love with being here uh-huh. that you didn't think you had to move here. Yeah, it felt like a... Is that really... The truth comes out. Well, yeah. Like, a friend of mine from college had been living here for a while. And <laughs> she was like... Hey, do you want to do some drugs and uh, <laughs> go to this like it's like like a camping out thing in the in the like a, it's like an hour away in like the middle of nowhere. It's like this Burning Man type event, and I was like, I don't want to do that. That sounds terrible. And she was like, Okay, well, Plan B. Do you want to do some drugs <laughs> and go see Terrence Malick's The Tree of Life at the Alamo South Lamar? Yes, I do. That sounds like. <laughs> The most amazing experience you could ever have, and it was. And then I was like, I have, "I'm going to move here." Is... Yeah, you were already going to move here for comedy, but like, yeah. but, but for yeah. for the the fulcrum of that decision to have been that moment, basically, I, I think fantastic. That is, I haven't seen a better movie since. You know what I mean? <laughs> Brendan, can you top that? No, no not at all. <laughs> no, no. I, I I wound up in Texas for graduate school. I got my master's at Texas Tech University. Okay. Where I also met my, uh, my event who would become eventually my wife. And, uh, after school, she and I were, uh, trying to figure out where to go next. Uh, and really, you know, she's, she's from the 
Uh, she's from like the rural uh, north of uh, of Fort Worth, northwest of Fort Worth, like the outer okay. outer reaches of the the metroplex, but small town of like a thousand people. Uh, and so she, you know, she kind of on her radar had uh, Austin as like a good place to go, and I I visited before and I loved it. So it came down to like Austin, R.A., um, which is you know back where uh, my friends and family and everybody are. Uh, yeah, and it was just uh, you know just being absolutely broke after you know seven years of college. Mm. Uh, Austin was at the time uh, the obviously cheaper place to go, so yeah. so we wound up getting here, moving in right, just right before, right before it was too expensive for me to live in, uh, <laughs> and now it's uh, just now it's just uh, still on that cusp of being too expensive for me to live in. Yeah. <laughs> We're treading water, basically. That's right. <laughs> sure thing. The barely keeping from drowning story. Ah. <laughs> uh. So you're here four years ago, mm-hmm. and you're here. I moved here. Uh, it'll be when did I move here? Twenty. It'll be six years in July. Six years on July first. And how did you? How did you meet? Aww. <laughs> you, I don't think there's a cute story to this either. Like, I don't yeah, really, we were just open micers. I feel like so okay. many people that you meet when you move to a scene or start in it, you're just like, I can't remember the first time we met. Or I, I think I remember the first time I saw this guy do stand up because I was new to town. You know, uh, Brendan started in May 2011. Yeah, right? I started stand up. Yeah, sure, right around that time. Mm-hmm. And then I got here in July with like some seasoning and really like maybe a year, year and a half put together up in Milwaukee, but uh-huh. still new, trying to meet everybody. And I just would go to open mics and write down the names of people I thought were funny, and then wait until I talked to them four times or whatever in front of them on <laughs> Facebook. It was very weird in retrospect. Yeah. Very weird and networky, but uh, yeah, I saw this guy go up at the block party. Oh, was that the first the, one? At the Old New Movement. Ah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Sure. In uh, July 2011. Rest and in peace, Old New Movement, back back point. when it was on uh, 11th and, uh, what, Rosewood. East 11th and Rose, Rosewood? Rosewood, yeah. Still still one of Austin's best neighborhoods. <laughs> still <laughs> exactly where you want to be walking to a gas station. <laughs> at two, yeah, at, uh, after <laughs> to dark. To buy a four logo at midnight. Yeah. Uh but, uh, yeah, and then we just started talking at the open mics, cake, buy coffee, all that, and uh, hanging out. So that's about a one-year trajectory, then, till your first sure thing. Yeah, just, uh, yeah, it was, it was about a year, right? Yeah, it was like a year later that the show started. And the, it, um, it doesn't seem very random to have people start a show. Like, it doesn't seem very easy these days. I know there are a lot of shows that start mm. these days, but... Like how did how did that come up? I, I, it's funny you say that because like on, on the one token, putting together a show, uh, putting together a weekly show that lasts, right? That's right. what we're talking about. Yeah, like, anyone absolutely. can anyone can just put yeah, something together yeah. and, and do a couple shows. Uh, but putting together something that that'll actually kind of stick around. On the one hand, it does take a lot of planning and coordination and like a willingness to kind of stick to it and stick to a plan and you know just not let stuff fall through the cracks. Yeah. And on the other hand, uh, I I'd venture that. In our story, this is true, and I'd venture that in a lot of uh, of other you know stable, uh, long running shows, it's true that there there was like a little bit of a of a hand of divine uh, divine inspiration or uh, yeah. just just a just a a bit of coincidence and luck that made it happen too. Uh, I think you've you've told the story enough times that that you you got it down pretty well, right? Yeah, well, especially like the early days of our friendship, we were like, oh, we should do. We were, I think we were like talking about maybe a sketch variety show or something, mm-hmm. and just hanging out and writing and stuff, and then we we're doing a podcast together ourselves for this local website and so i started an open mic at austin java parkway in uh, november 2011 because it just okay. that's the next logical move you're like an open micer the scene could sustain a couple more it seemed like at the time yeah, this was definitely back before there was an open mic every night of the week yeah. I, I, I don't even believe there was a wednesday night mic at that point when there when was it started it was against the the kick butt one that's still there oh that was the only other one yeah yeah that so, was the yeah. only other wednesday so it was like well, one or the other because that one was filling up mm-hmm and it was the the night the venue wanted it, you know, as well. So it just yeah, it just kind of happened. And then uh, comedy one hundred two seven, and uh, oh, remember yeah. that? Yeah, like a now defunct radio now station. Defunct. Yeah, yeah. 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 A, a syndicated version of a uh, a twenty four seven comedy radio station. Yeah, the NS Radio Group like picked it up from the the syndicate that provides the content, and they put it. And that their like publication team or PR department reached out to Java coincidentally. And they were like, let's do a 10 week, uh, show, the 1027 Laugh Lounge. We'll promote it on the radio. They had graphics huh. all ready to go and stuff. And, uh, Austin Jabba was like, sure. Do you want to talk to this dude? Oh, wow. <laughs> Runs their open mic. And, uh, 
Yeah, they didn't. Uh, I went up there. I thought maybe they would have the whole thing planned out. They're like, we want Matt Bearden to do it, or you know, Mike McCray to headline this one. And they they were just like, do you know anybody <laughs> <laughs> that could? <clears throat> So it was fun. The, the 10 weeks, there was a lot of people there. And, uh, you know, like I, you know, I talked to Brennan about like, what should we do? Like half hour headliner? How should I structure it? And yeah. Like, yeah. I, I was definitely like hanging around kind of the periphery of it all, even from the very beginning, I'd say. Uh, yeah. Just, well, just, yeah. We, I feel like we even had a discussion where I was like, I was like, what should I call this open mic and how should I run it? And like you were just, you, you, you've always been good about just getting me to say what I actually want. <laughs> He was like, you, you just want to host this yourself, right? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> like, I, I, I don't think that there was any like assumption that, that we were both going to be running the mic or anything, but, uh, but, but it's just that thing where like when you're brand new, uh, yeah. you know, around stand up and you're just open micing and you don't have opportunities to do other shows, your entire life becomes about just hitting the mics and yeah. the cohort that you start with. There's gonna, there's, there are people who will kind of always stick in my brain as like kind of my people mm-hmm. that were, I, I don't mean like who were even my friends, but just like, yeah, that, that was my class. Yeah. It, it, yeah. yeah. It, it was almost like being in a class with someone in like high school where like you always remember that guy or that lady, mm-hmm. you know, uh, because you just saw them at the same places so regularly when all you had to go to were the same open mics. Mm-hmm. Um, and so there was a little bit of that effect, but, uh, but when the, when the open mic started, I don't think there was, uh, you know, it, yeah, it took a conversation, but Duncan was running it alone, and then this uh, this show started, and got to give credit to Duncan. He put together a really great 10 weeks, and they did a really great job. Oh, I think I just bumped something. There we go. Uh, Duncan did a really great job uh, with that initial 10-week run of that show, yeah. and uh, there was definitely radio station support. Yeah, well, they like, were promoting it. People were listening to this radio station. They would, they would play an ad, and by the end of the 10 weeks, it was like, look, getting, getting crowded was like 90-some people for the last one, and... Mm-hmm. Uh, Austin Java, as soon as that was over, they were like, Hey, we don't want to, you know, continue the terms of the deal they have with, with Comedy 127, but do you guys want to keep, but they asked me, do you want to keep doing the show every week? And I'm like, well, yeah, but that's a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, then Brennan and I started switching off hosting, kept the laugh lounge going. We made our own like graphic for it mm-hmm. and, uh, did that for six months, I want to say. Yeah, and uh and I, I feel like we we haven't really thought a lot about like what those six months were, but a couple people were asking about it recently. Yeah. Uh, because the you know, the the show had its had its roots and the show would not probably have ever happened were it not for that radio station mm-hmm. contacting that venue and mm-hmm. Duncan happens to be running the mic there and they happen to ask Duncan to do it. And, right. And um so th- there never would have been a show. I think it would have just stayed a mic, right? Like there would have just been a Wednesday mic. But Yeah, um, well it's like um I think we did a one out like Bob, cause Robbie and John Tull were like, you want to do a show here? That's right. And I'm like, yeah, yeah I guess. <laughs> like, and we did like a one thing in February. Yeah. Which was fine. It, it turned out okay, but you know, it's just a one off. It was tough to draw for it. No, but, but from the day that we picked it up together in, you know, in earnest full time, I think yeah. that would have been what, September 2012? August, August, because like the first week of August was the last of the 10 weeks. And then right. we were just like, we were like, let's get our own logo. Let's book a uh, Brian Gutman headlined our first okay. lineup. I was mm-hmm. going to ask what your first of, official. Uh, Brian Gutman headlined the first Laugh Lounge that ever happened, and then the first one that we did on our own. Still the Laugh Lounge at this point. Still the Laugh yeah. Lounge because we wanted to keep the name <clears throat> and just keep the momentum going. Mm-hmm. And they even the now gone radio station forgot to pull those ads for a couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, so, <laughs> so, we, so we, we yeah, so we were coasting on some some resi- yeah. residual yeah. heat from this thing they nice. had in rotation. We coasted on it and then it disappeared. Completely disappeared. Uh, <laughs> th- there were a few months after that. Yeah, where where we went from having you know uh, that show went from having like seventy to eighty five something like that people turn out through the summer series. To dwindling down just smaller and smaller and smaller. Yeah. Uh, week after week, month after month. And I think there was a good two to three months of the crowds getting so small that, uh, I, I, I'd venture to say we had like maybe 15 people a week for a few weeks in a row. Yeah, less maybe. And then, and then I want to say that our smallest crowd ever, our, our absolute nadir happened <laughs> right before things just turned around. Uh, mm-hmm. and it was, I, th- I want to say John Ramsey, yeah. uh, huh. the wonderful John Ramsey was headlining. Yeah. To maybe a dozen people. Right, yeah. It's like John Ramsey just on Conan that year. Yeah. And he's not out all the time. And you're like, oh, I really want to press John Ramsey. <laughs> well, show, he, and he'd done one of the, the radio ones and it was, you know, very complimentary. But then, uh, yeah, in December, he's like, you know, you could seat people like near the front. 
So then they'd be like a group. And they, yeah. We get energy. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And we're, we're just face palmed. Like, I, we, we know. Uh, I know, man. I just, we, we know no one's here. Don't have just, a be, we're still paying you. Be cool. It's just, and then, yeah, that was like December 15th that year. And then we took uh, the next week off because of Christmas. And then the one after that. Uh, People started showing up. There's like a decent crowd. You know, we had like Albert M headline out. And we were like, oh, all right, maybe we're not done. <laughs> And then, uh, like, the whole month of January 2013 was just packed, like, and we were, we're asking people, like, how'd you hear about that shit? What, what, what happened? And Desperately it, trying to figure out, like, why people are coming to this yeah. thing now. And, um, and, and then in February 2013 is when we, we officially kind of fully went, like, you know what? We were still called the Laugh Lounge at the time. We'd made our own graphics and stuff, and we yeah. had our own Facebook page, but, like, that's all that we had done for promotion-wise. We are like, if we're going to keep doing this and... People seem to be showing up for it now, so it looks like it's got like a little bit of a foothold. Mm-hmm. We should take kind of complete full ownership of it and yeah. create a, a new identity for it, and uh, that is when uh, that is when Sure Thing officially uh, officially launched. And so the show has existed since the summer of 2012. Yeah, uh, it has been called Sure Thing since uh, February, February of 2013. Okay, and uh, this so this this June will make uh, four years, right? Yeah, officially, yeah, mm-hmm. our four anniversary is June. In June, and that's, I was just talking to, uh, Andrew Polk from New Orleans was on the show last night, and they, he, name drop! Yeah. Oh my god, just, here, this guy. let me pick that up for you. So <laughs> good. He was so good, too. He was, really he was so good. But he hadn't done the show for a couple of years since those are, like, I think he did, like, October 2013, mm-hmm. and he's just, just the way I'm talking about it, I was like, yeah, it's been three years now, like, pretty solid attendance but that six months still feels longer in my absolutely <laughs> yeah in my brain there's i'm still wary that well oh, this is gonna be the week there's that there's that little party that just thinks every week is the week that no one shows up how did you decide how to assemble your weekly lineup in terms of like the the, the show format that we use yeah I don't know if we had someone was asking me that too because uh to for the for the listener yeah. we do we do a showcase style that is uh a little different than other people uh because we we don't just do like six comics do in 10 minutes each we yeah. we have a we 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 have we have something that kind of almost mirrors almost mirrors like a club setup with a headliner yeah, a the little. headliner only does a half hour and then we do someone you will usually have at least one spot that does like 15ish minutes uh-huh. and then the rest of the spots are like you know 5 to 10 minutes um, and so, and so that, that enables you to like kind of rotate people through longer and shorter spots and like it lets you, it gives us flexibility to put some of the, the bigger names on, but not have to headline them so they can do, they can yeah. do like a less pressure spot and do yeah. new stuff in the middle or they can do like a, you know, yeah. a, a rock solid half hour or, or even like sometimes people pop in cause they need to get a, a get a clip or something for right. some kind of submission tape and you know we're very flexible on that side so h- how do we come up with that lineup i that can't remember style? like specifically but i definitely remember like vividly <laughs> i went up to the ms radio group and talked to their pr department and they literally just, there's like what how does the show go do there should there be an intermission at the <laughs> <laughs> middle of the thing and should it be with it i'm like no let me <laughs> Let me handle this guy. We, we should we should work some kind of momentum killer right, in, <laughs> right into the, the, the dead center of the lineup, right? Well, it's just it's just three people that do PR for several different radio frequencies, and they don't know anything about anything. Yeah. But, it's not their world. Yeah, but they came up with this idea, and it's going to be promoted. And so I know it's – I'm just – I get them to let me, like, I'm going to host and book these things. Don't worry about it. I'll get you the names. And then the next thing I did was go talk to Brennan where I'm just like, okay, how do we go about this? And we talked about, like, getting a better curtain for the room. And how to set up the chairs and everything. And then in those discussions, I think we had the idea, you know, the, the idea just do have a 30 minute headliner. There's not that many places around town at the time, or even still that people can do 30 minutes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, unless you're headlining the velvet featuring a cap once every six months at the most. Yeah. I'm, I'm very proud to say that, that, uh, that the format that we struck on, it, it, it's worked out so great because we've, we've been so lucky to be able to give people half an hour, mm-hmm. uh, sometimes for the, for the first time. And overwhelmingly, I would say that pretty much every single person who who did a half hour, who did their first half hour in our room, is still just doing bigger and bigger and better, right? Yeah, like yeah. I, I want to say, you know, not to not again, we'll just name drop some more people, but like, <laughs> but like, but, but I know, like, you know, Mac Blake's first half hour was in mm-hmm. our room, and like, mm-hmm. and to know that, like, yeah, w- we were right. This guy's really, really funny, and we knew he was really, really funny, <laughs> and we knew he had the time. Yeah, and you know, it, it turned out to be something that that uh, having a space where people could do that amount of time. 
I think has really helped a lot of comics. Uh, it just as it has helped me to have the show to to get up every single yeah. week. Mm-hmm. You know, having that is so good to have in a scene. It's something that, that can enable people to kind of grow and stretch out and kind of learn how to do that. Yeah, so it's both a great platform for people that are you know so many great writers and performers here in town. And then a good way to distinguish our show from just your standard seven people doing eight minutes, ten minutes sort of showcase, you yeah. know, which which we talk about all the time would maybe be more relaxing to book. Yeah. <laughs> but, but we still, we like the format. We like having a, you know, like a marquee headliner to present people. So. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, actually, I also think that like uh, that um, it's coming back to me. I think that we both liked the the club style where it, like it's 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 well known working in comedy clubs that that the feature spot is the best part of the whole show yep. like it's if you're a comic it's the best part to huh. do okay it's so because easy. because the host gets up and the crowd is ordering nachos yep. and <laughs> drinks and uh and like and there's a little part of them that even if someone's funny the part of them that feels like well they're on first so they can't be that good right right right, right. um and then the feature gets to go up with the crowd like actually kind of warmed, warmed up, up a bit uh, and like they've already got their drink orders in, and now they, oh, here's your first real comic of the night, right? And they get to go up and do just 25 minutes, half an hour, that perfect amount of time. 25 minutes is the perfect amount of time to do a set, like <laughs> because it gives you enough time to like stretch stuff out and like really kind yeah. of get into your get into yeah. your stuff. Um, it, but also gives you enough time to kind of react and do you know do things on the fly if you want to, and you're you're out before people are tired of you. Mm-hmm. Like uh, you know, there, there, there there is no <laughs> chance for you to exhaust them in 25 yeah. minutes. And then the headliner has to go up and like really deliver for anywhere from, you know, 40 minutes to an hour, hour and a half. Some people do even more than that. Mm -hmm. So, so I think that, I think that we both really like the idea of like a headlining set being a half an hour where we just kind of just ramp up the energy and just, you know, do these shorter spot, shorter spot, longer spot, and then hit that half hour mark and the show's done. Um, and we, we endeavor, we endeavor to keep our shows from going over long. I think an average show is maybe an hour 40 now, hour 45. Yeah. Uh, last night got a little wild. A little bit. Uh, a little bit. out of control, but, uh, but, you know, we, we also do it, we, we do our best not to overbook shows yeah. so right. that, so that we can kind of just keep the momentum, the momentum just driving forward for that, that half hour headliner. And then when they're done, we're done and everyone's, everyone gets out and can go do something else for the night. Yeah. Yeah. It's a free show, you know. We don't we don't own even ninety minutes or anything. Not at all. Well, I, yeah, and, and and we don't want to overstay our welcome, right? Yeah. Well, cool. That has been a pretty awesome discussion about where you've been. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. We're we're gonna actually wrap that up, and we're gonna we're gonna express our gratitude, or I am. <laughs> for hearing the story of Sure Thing. Letting this is me part grow. one. This is part one. Yeah, this is part two. one. That's a wrap on Comedy Way and Presents the Past with Duncan Carson and Brendan K. O'Grady. Do you want to tell us where to find you on social media, uh, on websites? Sure. You can find uh, everything you'll need to know about us is at surethingrecords.com. Oh. That has links to uh, our Facebook and Twitter and Instagram uh, presences. Sure thing ATX on most of those things. At sure thing ATX on most of those things. Uh, but surethingrecords.com mm-hmm. has, uh, has, has, it's your one stop uh, portal to everything sure thing. Awesome. And in part two, where we talk about the current, we'll hear more about what Sure Thing Records is. Dynamite tease. Uh-huh. You have been listening to Comedy Wham Presents The Past, hosted by me, Valerie, and brought to you by David Thomas. Be sure to visit ComedyWham.com and give us a follow on Twitter at ComedyWham. I'm Valerie, and that's been funny.